Hello everyone, if you are completely new to Arcade 26, this tutorial is made for you. In this tutorial, you will go from knowing nothing about Arcade 26 to creating your first great floor plan you see. If this seems to be intimidating to you, don't worry, you are covered. This is also perfect to someone who has been using the program but without proper basics and fundamentals to define project and produce great results in no time. This is a long video because Arcade is a big program and I'll cover all the steps and explain all tools, features to eventually create your first plan in Arcad. Make sure you check the video contents below, which is a process that will take you to the final piece. You will start the exercise by setting up the project units and information related to the project. Create walls based on the provided sketch, exploring best practices on wall construction in order to be efficient using Arcad. You will create openings, access the best graphic settings, use different approach to annotate and label the openings, create flows, set up representation styles to make a graphic appealing drawings. You will also place the staircases. You will place object for furniture, kitchen cabinetry, sanitary objects and other objects to make your drawing fully readable and interesting without breaking your bank. You will set up a room tags for all the spaces and use label to display room data parametrically. Lastly, you will place some dimensions to your floor plan to complete the whole um, drawing. Use various methods such as automated dimensions to speed up your workflow. Without any further ado, let's get started. Welcome to the first part of this video. We're going to be looking at setting up the project information. It's very important to do this exercise at the beginning of the project and set up key in all the necessary information that is related to this project. So to start with, let's move there to the top section of the interface. We have the drop down menus here, as you can see, let, let us focus on options and then move down to project preferences to set up the working units. Under here, I'm going to start with the length unit, which is it's going to be millimeters depending on your region. And then the area unit is going to remain in, on square meters, the volume, cubic meter, angle, I'm going to use the decimal degrees. And then the layout is going to remain as well as millimeters. And then once you're done, you can hit OK. The next is to set up the project story heights. So we're going to do that in the right side of your your, your 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 interface. This is called project navigator. It's been divided into four parts. We have project map, the view map, layout book, and the publisher sets. Under the um, project map is the list of the viewpoints of the project or the viewpoints of the virtual building it's been um, assembled in a hierarchy that is on a tree structure format so as you can see all your viewpoints are there your stories your sections elevations and other information like details under the view map that's it's more or less the same with the project map, but the difference is here you can create and edit your own custom um, views. You have that freedom to do that. And then the layout is where you set up your sheets and place drawings on it. And then later on, on the publisher set, this is where you share or you publish your information uh, in different formats, your PDF, your DWG, depending on that requirement. So let's go back to the view map. This is where we'll be focusing on most of the time because it have freedom to create and to create custom and edit our our views the way we want. So what I'm gonna do is to right click on the ground floor uh, story or or any story here. Let's just right click on the story to access the story settings. Or so you can hit Control Seven. There's a shortcut key, Control plus seven in your keyboard to access the story settings window. This window, you can expand it by dragging the edge like so. I think this is across all the windows in Arcade. 
uh, if you have uh, the computer uh, basic skills i think you are sorted in this so by default here is the list of the set stories that you see on the project map or project um, view map as you can see so we have done below here it's the buttons to insert or to insert the um, a new story and you can also delete a story there so let's see how you can insert a new story you have to select one of the story because you have two options to insert above and insert below in this case i want to create a foundation level or a foundation story i would select my ground floor and then hit um, the button for insert below let's name this foundation let's just leave it as a foundation for now and then i can set the height for this as 1.2 and then you can also delete um story if there is anything you want to delete by just selecting and hit delete once we're done hit okay let's go back to bring our sketch by the way if you want to follow along with this tutorial make sure you go down check the link for the sketch and download the sketch so that you can uh, follow along with this video so the next um important stage is to also set the project information or the information that is related to the project in aggregate there's we have a way of dealing or handling that kind of information i'm talking about information like project uh project details um clients details your contact details as well as the the, the designer or whatever the the technician depending on your responsibility or role and responsibility at that moment so if you go to the file and under info there's a project information here here there's a hierarchy and some subsections to key in information we have project details site details building details together with contact and clients details so it's important to key in this information at the beginning of the project you can add as you go with the project but it's also important to just spend a little bit of your time and just do the right things so under project i'll say project name will be my first plan in archicad sorry uh, in archicad so the project de description will be um a step by step tutorial on my first plan in archicad you can also expand this window by clicking on this three dots to access your multi multi-line description if you can copy paste information also here so if you hit ok project id will be a kicket let's say a kicket trainee 101 and i can copy this information then paste it on the project code project number as well it can be um, subject to your own um, practice standards project status we say is it a new project or conceptual i think i'll say pre preliminary stage okay and then you can also key in your keywords nodes as you can see and then move down to the side details it's important to key in also the side details building details and so forth so you can also add or remove a section here for example let's see what we can what we can add under building details you have to select the category in order to add um, a section within that so let's select the building details and then add for example i think here what i'm missing i can say uh let me say number of parking required or provided something like this um let's make it there and then you can say uh, 21 parking base depending on 
you get what I'm trying to do. And then once you're done, you can hit OK. But you'd find that this, because of the area of specialty, you specialize in some certain projects that similarly or that typical in terms of this information. You can export this information here and then import it in a new project when you start so that you don't um, start all over again. Information such as uh, client details, sorry, no, um, contact details, it's mainly for your for your practice. Your contact full name, contact ID, blah, blah. This is typical across all your projects. So it's important to know how you can speed up the process of key in this information and exporting it to the new project. So it, this information is also critical um, in a later stage of this project or this tutorial. You see how we can access this information within the project views and the layers book, how we can extract and derive this information to, to, our, to our advantage by using um, a, a, what you call an auto text uh, tool. So once you're done, you can hit OK then you are good to start a new project. Let's move forward to the next stage. We'll be doing the actual drawing of a plan by using a wall construction or a wall tool. So we're going to focus on the left side of the interface where all the tools are located, tools and objects are located. So they have been divided into, this section has been divided into three sections or three parts. We have the design, the viewpoints, and then the documents tools. So we're going to start with the design tools there. We have all the, all different types of 3D tools, as you can see, your column, slabs, and so forth. So we're going to activate the, the wall tool. By default, you'd see here in this bar, it will give you all the parameters of the wall. This is called the info bar. So it's typical to all the tools here. Once you select the tool, it will give you all the parameter of that particular tool. The difference will be the icon of the settings dialog where you can extend or expand these uh, parameters. You have the icon that represents the particular tool. For, for example, if it's a column it will give you a column icon as you can see so let's go back to the the wall tool and then let's open it let's click on the settings dialog so let me just collapse this you can also um, expand the window like i said before with the other uh, windows it's more typical or more as the same so we have we have different sections here for our wall settings. The first part is the geometry and positioning of our wall. We will be setting the positioning and the dimensions of our wall. So on the left side here is where you set the positioning. Currently it's been um, docked to the, uh, the home story, which is a current story you are working on. So, and then it's been linked to the top story again. You cannot, you can unlink so that you can create a custom or you can key in manual um, height for your wall, depending on how you want it. But um, for this case, because it's a double uh, story, I will restrict it to the next story. Then make sure it's on zero here. Perfect. And then if we move on the right side of the geometry and position section, we have different types of structures here. Three types of uh, wall structure. We have basic, uh, composite, and a complex. So in most cases, we'll be working on the basic, but for your understanding, walls comes in a different um, um, construction methods, for example. So they are times where you'd have multiple skins or multiple materials to assemble a wall you have to create what you call a composite a composite it's a composition of different layers of materials to come up with that particular wall and then we have the complex um, profile this way you use a profile to define your wall for this demonstration i will 
um, be focusing on the basic uh, structure where you can see we can now start to assign the material I'm gonna go for the brick structural and then there's also geometry method on how you can draw or place this wall this is mainly for the geometry don't worry about it now you will see when I'm placing I would try to explain it as well so this is the thickness of our wall you can also have different um, yeah, complexity of your wall you can slant your wall here and key in the angle of your wall slant but in this case I'm gonna go with the straight one so if we move down here there's a floor plan section this is basically the the representation on the floor plan as you can see we have the cut surfaces um, representation the pens so the lines so the cut line will be solid as you can see you can change to dotted if you want but for this it's going to be solid and then the cut line pen is going to be 0 0.35 I think by default this is the thickest pen in Archicad unless you create your own custom uh, pen that we can also look at if you do want if you allow me to do that let me know in the comment section or should we also do the custom um, pen or pen editing and then we can have the override car fill pens if we want we can override the the hash if you are from AutoCAD you would want to hash your walls but because this is a uh, we're using a, a 3d model or a, a beam uh, or an intelligent uh, beam object or element it will have all this representation keyed in it so you have to define it before you can place it so you can also override that here if you want but for this case i would depend on the material that i've keyed in here so as you can see it has the hatching and then the physical um, representation this tube represent both graphic on the floor plane and the physical on a 3d model physical representation I hope this makes a lot of sense so the outlines the outlines is just for the uncut for your for the uncut solid it's also important to understand so for for the time being let me just leave it the way it is and uh, let's move down here and uh, structural and analytic parameters for for now this is not um, what I want to dwell much on it but I want us just to focus on the structural functionality so you have to assign it between non-loading and loading pairing so if it's an exterior wall I'll just go for this and uh, let's ignore this for now because I'm gonna confuse you if you move down again below here there's classification and properties by by default or before even I explain this, Archicad uses classification systems to classify elements within the model. So your windows will be classified as windows, your columns will be classified as columns, and everything. So it's important because this will help you to organize and manage your project files or your project uh, elements within the the file so it's important to understand the significance of using this part by default anyway aggregate does majority of stuff here automatically but in cases where you want to use your own classification systems because there are different classification systems out there depending on the region even aggregate or graphics soft website has different types of classification um, systems for you guys to download so I'll also put the link on the description for you guys to check on that so this is just a classification system of Archicad as you can see if you click on this arrow so let me just collapse that it's just basic like this we have your site elements your space and elements elements are basically your your building parts as you can see your walls element blah 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 you can expand this 
so each each and every element you are placing in the model or in the file here it has to be assigned this it's better i think it's best or it's a good practice to always check what is the classification um for that particular object or element that you are placing just for the sake of control for for beginners this is a good um practice and then under the this classification and properties we have properties now for for all the elements here to define data as you can see some of this information here has been derived from the property manager i think in later stages i would explain also how does the property manager and the classification system works in conjunction so it's important to also understand that so once you are done with the the setting up of your wall you hit ok so by default if the tool is active in ArchiCAD, you see this a plus sign cursor or icon that means there is a an a tool or whatever object that is active or a command that is active so there's a geometry method of placing the the walls in ArchiCAD. for this case we have a sketch to trace over it there are different ways of doing that we have geometry method the first geometry method is being activated as you can see this one means i can draw using multiple points for example let's say um, i'm gonna start here and draw a wall um, and then i can specify this point and then go a different direction like that do the same and just continuous drawing a wall like that and then i can click on this right click to hit ok to complete the placement of your wall like that that's another geometry method if you click and hold on this arrow there's arrow in each um geometry method here if you click on this arrow and hold you have again a different um geometry method on how you can place your wall we have this the first one here which is the just like a line tool if you're coming from autocad this is just by specifying two points to place a wall for example let's place a wall from here, from this point to that point and then let's see another one if we click and hold again we have the rectangular method where we can place a wall for example let's say where can we yeah i think i'm gonna just do here we can just place a rectangular like that so in this case i'm gonna hit undo by ctrl z if you mistakenly placed anything Control Z means to undo in ArchiCAD. So um, <clears throat> the last one is the rotated rectangular method. I'm gonna just explain it here. You have to specify the angle first of placing um, the, the the walls, the rectangle. So um, if you want to place it on 45 angle, you have to define the line and specify the second point like that. Then you can now draw your rotated rectangle in 45 degree angle just like that let's hit ctrl z to undo that so by saying ctrl z now we've lost the active command for our wall to repeat the last operation or the last command you have to hit on the tool here or you hit w in your keyboard you see now the cursor changes and then the info bar also or changes give giving you the information for the current um, uh, command and you can also see the wall tool here it's also activated so this other geometry method is to, is to draw an arc 
as you can see i have a video that explains how this uh geometry method works um, let me just put the link in the top right corner here for that particular video just to go check on it and then i also put it on the description so you can follow that so that you can understand the the remaining um, geometry method of the wall construction let's move on to the placement of the walls for our sketch um what i've what i want you to understand here is the positioning of the walls you see this side the walls is outside the line and then this side on the right the walls are inside the lines what do we want here we need to decide which way which direction we are going if we say no everything is going to be on the outside what what means is that we need to take this wall outside to achieve that let's um cancel because the casa now it's on the it's active to an operation of placing a wall but now we want to select this wall we cannot select it because there is an active command you can hit escape in your keyboard like that to cancel that or you hit um the arrow tool arrow tool means to cancel the the operation or the command in Akiket. let's now select the the wall if you hover if you hover your cursor on top of the wall and arcade understands or the world will understand or highlight itself that there is cursor hovering same applies to any object in Akiket. so if you hover your cursor there on top of or above the element it will be now what um, highlighted being um, notifying you that is ready to be selected so in this case let's click select it and then what we want we want to take the wall outside the line so if you zoom in here you'd find our wall has this blue or dark blue line it represents the reference line of the wall in this case you see the reference line is inside the reference line is the one determines which side of the wall is going to be orientated so this guy is the location of the, the reference line so let's select it and then i'm gonna use um, this section on the info but says the reference line location so it's you can say should be on the outside can be on the center like that or it can be in inside you see now it's out, outside let's hit undo i want us to okay or move it back to the outside face so you can have you can also choose this button to instantly move your wall like that to the outside i think this also it's a quick way of doing um that so okay now let's move on and um, finish up our our wall construction so we have a wall that will run from here going all the way in this case you don't need to draw a wall again here you can also stretch um, this wall or extend it to this area but because we're using a a multiple points construction method to place this wall so it will it will be grouped uh, by default so to ungroup the elements in Akiket, you have to activate the suspend groups or hit a shortcut keyboard by saying alt g alt plus g to ungroup so you can just do that or activate this there so that you can select uh, individual pieces of that wall system and then i can click on this point here once you click on the point the pet palette will pop out this is a pet palette it will give you the tools to modify this um, particular wall we have the first one to say stretch and then we have this one to drag like see i'm dragging it and then we can also rotate the wall or mirror it depending on how we want it so in this case we're going to stretch it to this point okay right so i have this wall again to be drawn so that of is i can also make a copy of this wall and place it there 
to make a copy of the wall in Agiad, you right click then you go to move and you can also access the uh, drag rotate mirror or uh, the tools here again you can say drag a copy so you can drag a copy or rotate a copy or mirror a copy or you can drag multiple copies um, that will save a lot of your time or you can multiply if you want so i'm gonna go for the drag a copy and then i'm gonna pick this point and then place it there perfect you would want to make sure the walls are joining accurately in Akiad. So I can see the reference line stops here. It should continue all the way to this corner. Same applies to this one. So what I need to do is to select both walls. To select both walls, you select one and then you hold shift in your keyboard and then you click in that particular wall. Or you use a selection uh, method by clicking, specifying on clicking the first point in your space then you drag to affect the selection to affect the two elements you want to select but this method you see now if there are elements on top of each other it will select um, everything that comes across this selection so you'd want to be intelligent and smart about how your selection is important so the selection in arcade works like this if you come here under this uh this is a selection uh, method so we have partial elements entire elements and direction dependent direction dependent is this one we just click on the element directly like that but uh let's see the first one the first one is where it says any you how can i explain this okay yeah, this way the whatever element that is um, affected by the selection it will be activated or to be selected like this way so everything that is going to be covered by this is not not covered just selected or above like that it is going to be selected the difference what i'm trying to emphasize here is because we have the second one which is the what you call this let me see uh, the second one is called the entire element so this one you'd have to select the entire element and it's important when when you want to exclude other elements without selecting for example in this case i want to select this wall to do that i have to the selection um tool has to uh, enclose the element entirely on the box on the selection box for example what i'm saying is just if you select your box like that it has to cover the entire element inside the selection and you can you could see also the 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 graphic of the selection is different from the one we've been using before which is the uh, direct selection so let's see if you click here oh because the wall starts from here let's start our selection from here drag it along to cover the entire wall you see only the wall is being selected because it's the is the only element that was being defined within the region of the selection for example if you want to select this uh, line let's say we have to do this way and then enclose it like that so if you want to select both the line and the wall you have to enclose both elements like that i think there is an instance where this selection um will save you a lot of time more especially when the project is now being populated with a lot of data in it so you better have ways of selection in here so let's go back to this one is uh direct let's go back to this and make sure this one it's a, it's called a quick selection when it's unactivated like that so you it's very difficult to select an element directly like this you see doesn't work but if you activate it when you move a cursor like that it would 
highlight the element and you can just select it um, directly like that so i hope this guys uh, makes a lot of sense because i know it's a headache most especially when you're a beginner you would have a, a hassle of you know selecting um, elements in like here so there is a reason why they have been separated like that is because it's for you to really um, access your elements in an efficient way okay let's move on and place the remaining walls in our our in our drawing in our plan so we have this let's start with this one there's another way of um because we've now we've now lost the previous um, operation or the previous command for our wall we have to start all over again and set the wall but we cannot do that because that will be wasting of a lot of our time but to pick the parameters of the or to pick the settings of this placed wall and continue drawing you have to use um, the pickup parameter uh, tool here we're gonna just pick it and then once you hover your cursor above the element it will highlight it and then click on it so automatically it will load the information about the that element you've picked and then you can now draw your wall to the so it's on the geometry method of a rotated uh, rectangular so let's just click on the arrow and hold and then we're gonna use just the two point uh, geometry method like that and then place that let's find another area here I want yes let me just click here and then there's this one going all the way this has to be outside the reference line should be reference line location should be outside i can while i'm still in the process i can also use this tool to change the location of my reference like that so it will change it to the outside and then please this will save your time um, a lot so some of these walls are what you call uh there's another wall here some of these walls are internal walls so they have the thickness of the exterior wall so what i'm going to do is to select those walls that are going to be half the thickness it's going to be this and then i'm going to hold shift to continuing the selection like that yeah and then i can scroll down here in the info bar because remember this is just all the information you need from the settings from the settings dialog here but i can just quickly scroll down and find the wall thickness and then make this 115 oh sorry 150 is the is the half of 300 okay and then this wall has to continue all the way to here and then there's another way of instead of clicking on this stretching the wall like that you can use this wall or any element or extend this wall to this wall it's important to understand that as well so i will select this wall and then go to the top here there is under editing tools i think these are all editing tools as you can see I'm going to find the adjust. You have your intersect, your fillet, blah blah blah, as you can see, and then your trim, which is your scissor. And then this one, if you want to break your wall into two parts, you can do that as well. So I'm gonna go for the adjust. I'm gonna adjust it to this wall. I have to click the element where I want this wall to be adjusted. So I'll go for this wall to adjust it to there. So perfect. So from here. I think here this will be the staircase and we also have uh, a, a wall here so i just quickly um picked the parameter of this the shortcut is alt in your keyboard you see if you hit alt and hold it to activate the pick parameter you just pick it and then i draw like that Oh, let's select it and move the reference line to the outside like that perfect yeah 
oh, we need another wall here let's pick parameters of here by hitting alt i'll pick this one because it's an out exterior wall then let's place it there okay i think we have all the walls no we need another one here for the garage mm -hmm. and then make sure they are what they are connecting i'm gonna select both of them by shift hold and fillet or intersect sorry okay but in most cases in for best practices you'd want to have your reference line to be in the same location in this case it's different you see the wall is in it's in this one it's from the outside and this one is in the inside let's just turn it there oh sorry i have to select this one and then turn it to that okay so that i can have a continuous wall reference from the outside even this one needs to be from the outside yeah now you have a continuous reference line and the inside so make sure the connections of the walls are perfect you see here is perfect and then this one ends on the way so you need to make sure it's um, well connected let me just show you how it can do if you click on this point and stretch it to here it will give you this eye the eye icon to um, notify you this this is the edge of the wall and then click on it it will clean up um, um, instantly like that okay so we are done with the wall construction the next stage it will be um, placing the openings let's move on with our project um i'm gonna zoom in here because this area is going to be the open kitchen to the dining and the lounge so i have to define the area of the kitchen i have to have a wall here a dwarf wall here that will end in the way so to position that wall because we don't have a position for the sketch here I think this is the perfect opportunity for uh, for you to understand how to key in some dimensions when you are placing your wall. In this case, I want a certain dimension from here to there to the wall. So to achieve that, you can use a wall. I mean, a two D a two D um, line to draft from here by specifying the point just like you're doing on the wall and you can you have the tracker active as you can see it gives you the distance as you are stretching or moving away by extending your line so in this case i want to have the um, position of the wall at 2.5 i'll say 2.5 in here you can also if you want to um, define the angle as you can see you have a parameter for the angle there but to access it you have to click the downward arrow like that so that you can key in the angle in this case i'll just leave it at 90 degrees like that so now i know the wall position will be from here to there or the best thing or another way i don't think is the best but it's a different way of done that's what I prefer in most cases. So I would pick parameter of the wall like that by hitting Alt, like I said. And then, because I want to draw this wall at some set at, at, at a certain uh, point along this wall, so I need to tell Archicad to do that. So what I do, what I'm gonna do is to pick this point. I'm not picking it. I'm just hovering and place. Just putting the cursor there without clicking anything it will highlight the corner with this blue circle and then now i can move as you can see i can move away and the tracker will give you the information because it's the referencing to the uh, blue circle what i can do i can type in 2.5 and then hit ok 
Now I can start drawing my wall like that. So, so it has to be from the outside. Perfect. Let's do let's do it again. Let I undo. Let me undo this. Okay, I'll move the cursor out from this point, from this corner. Once the circle is appeared, what I'll do, I'll move this direction and key in the dimension that I want my wall to offset from that position and then hit enter. Then I can draw my wall and I can specify the length of the wall. It's going to be around also 2.5. Perfect. So now I can select this line and delete as you can see so now i have the kitchen area here and uh, and uh, let's now move to the next item which is placing openings i'll start with the doors first in i get we use door tools um, to place or create openings for the doors in let's activate the the design the design section and find a door tool like i said it will give you these parameters of the door here as you can see we have the size of the door we have the position from the header and the reveal blah 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 or you can open its settings and see all the all these parameters by default, Arcade has an extensive library that comes with loaded within Arcade. So, as you can see, under doors here, we have different um, folders there. We empty door openings, garage doors, hinge doors. Currently, we are under hinge doors. I want to start with the um, main entrance door here. It's going to be a pivot door. So, I'm going to find that in the library. I think it's going to be under rotating doors. Yes, yeah. And then we have a pivot door here. Once we've selected or activated the door from the library, you get this uh, parameters. We start the preview and positioning where you can um, set the uh, width of the door. Currently, it's by default at 1.3. I think it's fine. The height of the door and then the offset height from the seal or header value, depending on where you want to key your... In this case, I think it's starting from the seal to story zero, which is um, from the floor finish level. I'll set it or leave it at 100 for for now and then the reveal is the position within the wall thickness where you wall for example you see this is the wall on the preview here you see the position of the of the door frame it's right on the edge of the of the wall so if i change that to maybe say 90 it will now be located almost on the center of the of the wall and then again under the preview you have option to preview the front and on 3d and the image but the image doesn't give you the real it just give you the the, the ideal <laughs> settings of, of of the door in this case what you see here that's what you're going to get so it looks boring now we can say hit okay and then place our our door like that so to place it let's just zoom in here so that you can see it like zoom in just by rolling forward and back for your in the wheel of your mouse i think this one is pretty straightforward like i'm saying to zoom out i have to roll back the wheel to zoom in i have to roll in the wheel like that once the door tool is active you'd see by this graphic representation it, it wants me to pick where i want to place the the door so for example i'm going to place it on this wall so i'm going to start so the the star and the the thick line represent where the wall or the the door supposed to open 
the direction of the open so i'll click from the inside like that and then i can also define the direction using this so in this case it's going to be in the inside like that okay i think i need to move because these stepping stones are the path to the entrance so what i need to do is go back to the arrow tool or hit escape to cancel the command click on the arrow and then i'll select this uh, door what i want i want to rotate uh, to me right because this side of the door is the one supposed to be on the path so i'm gonna click on this point the, the hot spot and then once the pet palette pops out i'll pick mirror click on mirror and then i'll go back to the point again click on it it will mirror it vertically and then let's click on this point again and drag pick drag in your keyboard or just hit ctrl d in your keyboard and then pick your door like that and then move it to the area like that perfect i think i need to move it backward by maybe a hundred or just in line it with the stepping stone like that okay it looks pretty much easier okay um we i think this is just default settings of the software but uh, it's not always a better representation for what we we know in AkiCAD. you need to define or take a little bit of extra steps to achieve great results what i mean about that if you look at this door the color the pen color it's not something that we are um, from architectural studies or stand architectural drawing standards is what we want to see so you need to define this to have a better result same applies to your walls i think we'll look at that at a later stage so let's select um this uh door and then what i want us to do go to the info box and scroll your mouse back like that to access i want the floor plan and section uh part or you can go back here under the settings dialog to access that part for the floor plan section down below here and then you can see all the parameters of the floor plan representation so we have um we have the floor plan display it's, it's under symbolic which is i think fine for now and then we have the symbol and outline we have the option to override object lines pen types override the object pens as well here because this information is important but before you override this where is the original um where is the original this definition being placed because when you override something that means there is the original um definition for that so the original definition for this is under the door settings here if you click on it and then expand it we have this forward and backward arrows that opens new pages for the parameters of setting up your door as you can see if you go on by that you see that bunch of settings a uh, bunch of pages about settings of the the door but to be to keep on clicking on the arrow it takes much of your time what you want to do is to go direct to the parameters you want to define in this case you have to click on this arrow here if you click on it it will give you all the parameters or the pages that you need to define in this case i will go down here under floor plane and section because that's what we've been overriding under this um, floor plan and section area here so if we click on it it will give you all the 
parameters about floor plan and section which is basically the 2d representation of this wall so let's see there are a bunch of parameters here mainly for pens line types symbol blah 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 so to start with let's start with the 2d detail level it's now by mvo by model view options so the 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 detail level of the door is controlled by the model view options we don't want to see that we want to be a scale sensitive right we want to be a scale sensitive what i mean about that when i change the scale for example i'm working on a scale of 1 is 200 i can see here from the properties of this um, the view is 1 is 200 if i change the scale is 250 it's now blowing up the the drawing so that means i need to reveal more details that's what i mean about i mean about this scale sensitive or i can just key in 1 is to 50 so that it can give me the details on a 1 is to 50 um, detail so it says show the reveal on symbol i'm going to say also always so if we check on the floor plan preview here it's now giving you all these details about unlike what you see here it's just shallow it doesn't have the details it's good for for some stages of the project but it's better also to understand this from the beginning instead of um have to go through it once you are deeper in the project so and again uh what is important here also is to change the pen the pens pens the pen style so in this case the frame control pen i'm going to change this to be um this to be let me find i think let's go for 0 open uh, 15 which is pen 2 uh, we can just key in here and then uh, type in 2 there go down here also i'll just use the same here and then move down to the casing just make everything 2 where is this one? Oh. This one's because it's an open path that indicates the rotation, the path for the swinging of the door. So this is going to be set on a different um, on a different parameter. So to click to access that, let's click on the arrow again. Let's find the opening lines. That's where you're going to access this. The opening lines, a 2D symbol display. We're going to override. The model view options currently they are on color pen 3 and the line is solid i'm going to make the line dashed small you see now and then set this to 2 as well perfect so now we have this kind of a detailed representation of the tool and then i can hit ok perfect okay now i have a decent look of the uh, door symbol in my my drawing let's move on and place the internal doors because we already now have placed the front door so i'm gonna go back to the door tool and open settings this time around i'm gonna change the folder to the hinged folder and scroll down here and find what i want to use so in this case i'm gonna go for this basic door you have the option to change the leaf under the hinged door settings so change but let's start from the beginning so that you can see this is the nominal sizes and tolerance i think here most of the case i don't change anything here i just leave it the way it is and then the door leaf i can change to something that i like you can scroll down that bunch of settings here you can also create your own custom door leaf which is um, another a tutorial. I'll put it in the top right corner there or in the description as well. So let's find, because it's an internal interior door, not one for just flash door. I think this one, yeah, this will work. The handle will be uh, 
like something else here man and then let's move on to the next page here we doesn't need to set but we want to also define the symbol let's do it again we have to click on the arrow and then we wanted to access the floor plan section again the 2 d file we're going to say 1 is to 50 automatically it will change the show reveal always it has to show the reveal and then we set the pens to color 2 for all for all the parameters okay and then we have to now define the path under the opening lines uh, section which is this part and then let's override the model view options change the line path to a small dashed and override the pen to two as well okay and then hit okay from here we can place our door we have a door here we have I think here we can have an opening instead of a door right yeah I think right. we have another door here oh by the way this is supposed to be a continuous it's supposed to be a laundry to to the kitchen and then another door we're having somewhere here okay yeah perfect so for other for openings like we have here i think i need to i need to fix this because as like i was saying this is supposed to be a a space instead of i will select this wall and then shift and hold and then click on this one to make sure they are intersected or intersect like that because this is a space not a, an outside okay and then what i need to do is to define the openings we have an open here and then another opening here so what i'll do i'll go to the design tool palette and then there is an open tool there are two ways of doing it there's an open tool here or you can use an opening as a door so if you if you click on the door tool opening settings you have an empty door opening you have different types of openings here so you can use that but the the disadvantages of this you have when you set your door schedule this it will automatically be part of your door schedule if you want it it's okay but if you don't want to you have to set a criteria to exclude that but setting a criteria it's also time and the best way again or if you don't want to go that route how you can use the opening tool the opening tool it doesn't have much of parameters it's just to set up the dimensions here if you need to open its settings it's just to define how you want the settings to be, i mean the symbol to be the cut symbol as you can see i can go for let me just go, say no symbol because i don't want to show anything there and then uh, what else again can i do nothing else you can do in terms of that and then set the height to 2.1 because it has to be the size of a door like that and then the this is the this is no this is no this is the offset from the ground it has to be zero and then the width is going to be 1.2 the height of it is going to be oh this is linked the dimensions are linked so once we change one it will affect the other so i have to unlink it like that and then this is going to be 2.1 okay then i'm gonna place the opening here another opening there yes perfect so i can also change the graphics uh, representation in the, in the floor plan as you can see it's on orange color i doesn't want like this this is not a visually appealing 
representation so i'll just select both of them by selecting one and then hold shift to add another selection then let's go at the top here on the info bar there's a floor plan and section part let's click and bring it down i'm going to override the cut elements and uh, i'm gonna use no let, let me use the override let's just use color two for every pen parameter just like that because it's 0 0.15 millimeters i think it's fine for that yeah we're good to go great so we have uh, now our internal door placed so the different types of doors we have for this project we have a garage door here and then we have some folding sliding door for the area for the lounge and dining so let's see how we can set that let's start with the garage door first so let's zoom in here by the the wall or by the garage and then activate the door to opening settings let's go back we want the garage folder and there are different types of garage uh, doors here they have overhead garage garage double door high speed door tilt let's go for the vertical slide okay and then you have the option to change the door leaf let's find something that can I think for now let's pick this so you can also change the handle something like that and then also we also have the detail level for 3d detail level and 2d detail level it's always important to set this to full resolution and then the 2d level it's on the scale sensitive but this one also make sure you can set it under floor plan and section as well remember we came up here and then we set this to 1 is to 50 so that can give us the 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 pre, the, the reveal or the the, the details <laughs> that's what i'm trying to say and then let's make the uniform make the make the color pens uniform like that and then i don't want to like i don't want to use the fields i'm gonna check it off then okay we come here with place and show the direction and uh we can go back and select let's set the width on the info bar here there's a size let's set the width to maybe five meters okay and then click on the point so that we can activate the uh, pet palette to activate the drag tool let's drag it to somewhere here to the corner exactly like that okay i think let me make it 5.5 .5 so that it becomes move it here okay that's the garage door and let's move into the lounge and dining area to place our sliding folding tool go back to the door tool opening settings this time around we're going to find sliding folding door folder and then there are two different um, designs here we have sliding folding multi-panel and then by fold i think i'm going i'm going to go with the by fold they look at the representation on the preview and you can set the door leaf the way you want i would want to have the plain panels set the handle to a fixed handle and then let me click on this arrow to bring in the floor plan and section parameters switch off the fill and then the 2d detail level like always I'm gonna make it 1 is to 50 so that you can give me these details and the reveal always set the pens to color 2 to be consistent in your your line weight and then what's what's left 
nothing left hit ok then come here it's going to open from the outside so i'm gonna select the outside like that and then click on the outside to define that so we can also change make it fill this whole area here right you can just click on this point and then on the pet palette we activate the move node stretch it to this point do the same to this area as well but we need to be functional we cannot have a leaf that is uh, huge like this so you have to break it down into some smaller portions so that it can be well constructed so let's go back and say instead of having how many we have one two three four five uh, panels and these panels are huge so we need to reduce the size of panels by increasing the number of panels so let's go back here and click there let's find the nominal size and tolerance not the door settings and openings we have a number of leaves here we can say side one we want side one is this side we have only two panels or two leaves this side we have three so i'm gonna increase by one one so this one is going to be four one on each this one is going to be three okay if you look at one it looks reasonable yeah on the front elevation so from here you can hit okay to affect or apply the changes okay right so there is an element of again labeling the doors in floor plan how do you do about it? so labeling sorry the door symbol I can select all the doors and do it once so let's start by just labeling this uh, uh, front door if you scroll down in the info box here there is a marker type where we can say it says no marker at the moment we can click to find what we can use we have different options here we would, let's see on the door marker 26 this is what you get by default so we need to customize this to suit our own taste so to do that let's say you open the settings of the door and then what i want to do collapse the settings and move down to the dimension marker under dimension marker you see already we've loaded the d marker 26 let's set the pens to be uniform and then this is the preview let's make it two to be uniform with the door let's see on the preview oh by the way it could have been nicer i kept to show the label on the preview as well here i don't know why do we have two previews we could have merged this to there so that you can have it in context not just one like that so then we move down to the marker text style you can also but we've overrided or overrule the pens to be uniform so there's nothing that you can do it unless you uncheck this and then you can decide to use a different text style but let's just do that okay and then under marker symbol and text so we have option to choose a marker that we want to use for this i'm going with the circle and then i don't want to see this line the extension line let's uncheck it and remove it then um, we can access some other pages here we have the content seal or we'll just click on the the arrow and then let's see under seal we want just to show the id dimensions we don't want to show the dimensions or you can show the dimensions if you want but for this case i don't want to show the dimensions and then uh, let's see under fire ratings you can also show the fire ratings on the floor plan um the show you vol this is just all about showing content text and override 2d representation perfect and then from here you can 
I think let's go back to the marker geometry because there's uh, some items we need to set. But before we do that, let's see the changes that we applied already. You see, now this is the changes, but we need to move this to here by the door. You can do it manually like this and then move it there. But imagine you are dealing with how many doors so many doors you cannot do this it will take your time so let's see how you can perfect that or control that globally let's go back to the settings what i want us to do here is the marker position has to be zero zero means it's going to sit right on the door and then the let's uh, go back here what I want it's under the dimension mark let's set the marker size no, I think it's fine let's see what we need to do is because the ID of the door is ridiculous we need to change this to a shorter ID so to do that you can also scroll just on the info box you'd find the ID and properties let's just say let's reduce this zero zero zeros to remain with zero, only one zero so that's basically your 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 id but if you go back again to the settings i want us to reduce the size of the marker let's make it um, six yes i think it's fine now yeah you can see now you can move it uh, whatever way you want if you still feel it's too big you can reduce the size of text together with the size of let's go back let's make it uh, seven or you can make the the symbol the geometry to to change it depending on the size of the text let's see how we can set that let's go back here under marker geometry let's say the marker position marker size unit okay fit shape to text yes this is what i want and then once i let's hit okay and see you see now it's been growing if i reduce the size of the text it will reduce as well let's say under marker text style set the font height to uh, to 1.5 then hit OK. You see, it goes with the geometry. That's the, the good part of having like this. If you set it to 1.2, it will move together with the with the geometry. Perfect. So now you have um, the door label. There is another way of placing labels in an ArchiCAD by using a label tool in the 2D or document tools. The label tool so if you click on it and then open its settings there are examples of uh, different labels here you can find a door for door or for a property id because a door is just labeling an id so this is what we need to do and then we're going to go to the same process as well and set i'm gonna take off the okay let's just place it before you can understand what we are setting let's hit ok and then to place it you'd have to select or pick the door and then there we go it will give you the ID for the door and it's still the same as the one we had for the front door previously so let's set it the difference between this is because it can we can select it separately unlike the one we're using the door marker the built-in door marker type for this that's the difference and you can have you have more control of maybe um, switching off a layer or putting a different layer as you can see it's under annotation label this one it doesn't have a layer because it's dependent on the door so that's the difference so let's see how you can do it let's go back to its settings what i want is to take off this line i think it's 
because of the pointer it's activated here. Okay. Oh. Yes. The pointer is activated here. So we need to set also the the symbol label symbol label and custom settings sorry and then we have also some parameters here this is the display content so we have only set to show the id you can show the name of the the name of the door is say door 26 or just the id so if you move forward to the next page we have a frame option or a frame geometry or frame shape it's grayed out because um you have to go back to the textile and activate the frame here so that it can be active as you can see if you go back you can either choose the shape you want to use this time around i'm gonna go with a different um shape so that you can uh see the difference let's say the hexagon for example okay and then let's move on to the next page i think this is the elements and objects that you can use to label using this tool as you can see almost everything you can place a label so let's go back to the geometry settings i want us to set the text pen to color 2 the pointer to uh, uh, the no but this hasn't okay this to color 2 the geometry the geometry where is it yeah fit it says fit frame to text like we did for 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 the front door if you hit okay <clears throat> it has this leader let's take it out the the leader or the arrow i think it's under the pointer if you say undo it, it will go and then okay but now it gives us this extension line let's take it out go back and then under symbol label custom settings we need to say okay no here it's here we need to say the leader line off and then we're gonna set the position for the door to be zero so that it can sit right on the door position we're gonna fit text to frame fit text to frame okay let's leave it there and then um we, what we need to do is to define the id for for this so as you can see there is a better way of managing the ids in a kit for this one we just manually um uh, override or edited the id for this but can you imagine when you're dealing with so many doors depending on the project complexity so you have to have a better way of managing the id um globally so to manage the id for for the for the doors okay for example let's before we can manage the id let's apply the same label to all the doors so what i'll do i'll pick parameter that different ways of placing the doors as well you can pick parameters like we did before pick the settings of that and label label this and label that okay or you can either now select all the doors you want to label you can select all the doors you want to label and then do what go to the document under annotations annotation you can label selected elements like that okay I think that is quicker and it's much effective when you're dealing with a complex project and then from here what we want to do is to uh, manage the ids for for these doors because at the moment they are not um it's too much and then you can see the 
the settings trying to fit the content in in the label and it's, it's increasing the size of the label humongously so what we need to do is uh, let's say let's select all the labels by selecting one and hold shift and add to the list and then let's say no sorry sorry about that let's escape what we need to do is to select all the doors all the doors we want to affect its um ids same applies to this one and then even this one as well so we're going to go to document and open listing extras we want to open the window for the element id manager in this case we now have a perfect opportunity to define the system of labeling of our doors so what you are saying is that um, we need to create a criteria on how you want us the labeling or the coding to be like so we have ab available criteria here as you can see so in this case i'm going to use a criteria of all the doors that are on the same height and width should be labeled on the same id that's basically that so i would by default a kit comes with that kind of uh, criteria you can remove and add criteria in this area that's where you are defining your criteria so i can just remove this and then remove that so to set up a new criteria i would go in this area and then find the door width add it to the selected criteria and then also the height i'll add it here and then i'll say set the same id by criteria if you say unique id for for each element that will give every door a different um id so and then from here what you need to do is to go to the id format um panel and then here you need to define the coding and the id of your doors in this case i'm gonna say the character here should be d okay and then um these are the parameters to to use this one says not to use because it doesn't have um a value for now and then this also we don't want to use them okay we just need the one for the d code and the number so that's basically what you want and then under this um, field would want only two var or two character so which is going to be zero one it's going to start on zero one so if you say zero 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 it's going to start counting on zero 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 and it says zero zero one zero zero two just like that so it's going to start on zero one okay now we but it, it doesn't want us to change i don't i think it's because of this so let's just say text or count what is the problem there is a problem here i don't know what okay let's go back here and see what's the problem set this there, there, there save settings and close i don't know why this area is grayed out that's strange for me i've never experienced this uh, let's save and close go back to documents listing and extras element id manager let's go back what might be the problem I don't know what's my the problem okay i have to figure out what might be the cause to to this uh, behavior of the element id manager because it has to give me the the option to change the id format but for this case um let me get away of this guys um i'm sorry about this i have to continue with the, the remaining part of the video but this is the exactly the same settings that you need to follow when you're dealing with the listing of uh, your ID money. I don't know what might be the problem. I have to now troubleshoot and see because I think it will now 
take all of our time to try to troubleshoot that but if i've managed to get the results i'll let you know guys and i'll make a video about that as well so let's just um, save and close and then because we don't have many doors here i would level them um uh, manually so this are going to be on the same id because they are they are the same in terms of the height width and type so i'm gonna give them door two i'm gonna give them door zero two this one is going to be door four i mean door zero three just like that and then um let's change let's select all the labels and set go back again to the settings i want us to change the text height to because it says fit text to frame if you go back here it says fit text to frame but we don't want that what we want is to set the frame um, size so let's say the text height is um, 1.2 and then you go back to the symbol level and custom settings we're gonna set the frame width to be maybe seven and then this has to be equal sides it has to be seven millimeters then hit okay okay that's basically the same but in this but in most cases you have to have one geometry shape for your for your your id for your door id so i'll just revert back to a circle it doesn't look like a circle because i think we didn't the dimensions are not the same this supposed to be seven like that okay still too big let me make it six go back make it six make it this one also six okay that's basically it to see from this this type of situation whereby you have a door here i mean two doors that are next to each other and then the label it's in between you don't know you don't know where what this label for you have to see hoover your casa on the label like that it would select or highlight the door that is for that particular level so i can now move it to here we can pick parameters by hitting alt to pick the parameters of the label and apply it to this door select it and uh, drag it to the position like that okay that's it about the op doors and for the windows it's also straightforward as well um let's say go back to the design and design tool let's activate the window tool and then i'm going to start um, i have a window here i have a window here another one there another one here another one there so for for the toilet okay yeah i think I think this is a scullery and a toilet i'm gonna use the same window for these two spaces let's open its settings and then we also have a bunch of uh, different types of windows in architect so we have basic windows pay blah blah there are all sorts of windows but in this case i always work using the basic window because it allows me they give me the opportunity to customize the wood type of window that i want for example this by default this comes as a wood material like this let's just check on 3d they just come like that but uh, for the sake of and uh, this presentation let me just get away with some of the parameters here um, the first thing that I want to set, I will pick this window 26. The first thing that I want to set is under the, because it's a window for the bathroom and the scullery, the height is going to be around 600. And then the width is going to be around 900. Uh, currently, it indicates it's a side hang, 
by looking at this um, opening line so what I want to is to change that to be a top hang so I'm going to go to the basic windows and then we have opening type change this to a top hang that would be like that and then uh, um, let's do the same again as same as the doors I'm gonna click on this arrow and then let's bring the floor plan and section okay make sure you show the the plan here let's take off the fill and then let's set the 2d detail level to scale sensitive 1 is to 50 this to be always and set the pens to to color 2 for every parameter for the pens just like that okay and then that's your your door i mean your window let's check on a 3d so we have um the material option so let's see how we can use it. this is supposed to be an aluminum window so let me just say go back here let's find the model attributes and then i'm going to say uniform window surfaces i want to change them once so i'm going to unify that and then set this to a metal uh, let's find the metal aluminum here as you can see then the frame pen such pen on a 3d so let's use the same color 2 for the representation okay and then if you go back here we have opening lines as well we're going to override that and set this to a and we're using dash small and color 2 as well and then hit ok we can now place the window just same as we did for the doors so let's say we're gonna click it's going to open from, from the outside we'll open to the outside start from the inside and then opens to the outside like that do the same to this area like that okay yeah i think we have another one here this is going to be a different one because it's a long um window i'm going to go for yeah this one the triple window as well but um <clears throat> sorry about that because um you spend your time setting up the the parameters for these windows so to affect them in a different window type you have to pick parameters like that to avoid redoing it again and then opening settings select or find the window type you want to go and then i'm going to do it to hit alt and uh, control and alt in your keyboard to activate this injection i'm going to transfer the parameters of this window preview to this one like that you see now i have all the problems the difference here that i need to do is to change the height and the 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 width so that the the opening width should be i think um, just two meters and then the height is going to be 2.1 it's a full height um, window and then i'm going to change all this the main of the sash to be fixed let's say fixed 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 where is fixed or fixed sash fixed sash and then this one also should be fixed okay so now i doesn't i don't have to edit the 2d settings because i already affected it to, to do that so i'm gonna hit okay then i place the window here like so okay so i forgot here we have a a sliding door i think it should be yeah we're gonna have a sliding door here you see how we can go about that so we can have we can use the same window here to this area which are areas as well we need. I think we need a door as well here okay and then pick parameters of the label 
to the same place it to the store select it oh sorry and then move it just up there just like that okay i think i also need to clean i like to clean my drawing before it get mess so just move this in a perfect area like this where it doesn't um interfere with with other other document other elements something like that this one this one i don't have a choice i'll leave it okay perfect so let's see how we can do the sliding door um, i'm gonna pick parameters of this folding door because i don't want to start all over again for the 2d settings open it and then let's go to sliding and then find uh, the sliding let's go for this one and then control alt and hold to transfer the settings to this um, sliding door in this case we didn't change the material for the surface material for the for the folding doors so let's find that and then go back here under model attributes let's make the door surface uniform so that we can just change it all together to an aluminium okay and then on 3d level you need also to say it should be in full resolution so that it can give you the, the a, a good picture then hit ok to apply the changes let's apply it here it's two way out of the reach let's stretch it to there also stretch it to there okay i think i need to increase the size of the side panel by clicking on this hot spot oh i think it's this one yes and then i can say this should be a meter perfect so now we have that okay let's move on to the next stage of the project we're going to look at the floor construction and staircase construction so we're going to start by the floor construction it's going to be a slab tool if you go to the design tool palette there is a slab let's pick our slab tool there and then um we can define our parameters of a slab in the info box here or let's just open the settings for for the slab and then the geometry position is going to be on the zero because we are dealing with a ground floor area and we have two different types of the slab structure or the floor structure in this case we have the basic that's what we're going to look at and we have the a composite remember just like the walls you still have composite composite for the for the slab it's basically having a multiple um, different materials to define a slab or a floor for example i'll give you an example maybe you are having the concrete for the bedding and the sand blinding under the bedding and some um, damp proofing material and we have ultimately the floor finish or the floor tile for the floor altogether makes a composition rather that is why there is this tool for the composite to come up with uh, a composite for your your floor slab in this case we're going to use just a basic structure and then i'll see how to use this and mimic the result of more like a composite let's click on the basic and then i'm going to set our the height of our slab to or the thickness of our slab to 150 and then make sure the offset from the story or from the ground is zero and then uh, we have reference plane here i think we're gonna use the top this is key guys it's key to the um the behaving of uh your slab um offset position for example if you use this one let me see what's the name this is called bottom okay. the reference plane is from the bottom so that means when you key in zero here the bottom 
uh, of the floor is going to sit on zero. In this case, the bottom, I mean the top of the floor is going to sit on zero. So if your flip, if your floor finish is on zero zero zero, so that means you need to use the top of the slab, which is the the top reference. I, I hope it makes a lot of sense. But if it doesn't, let me understand from the comment section so that I can uh, have a clear video specifically for the slab um, construction. And then if you check on the floor plan and section, every tool or object has this part, guys, floor plan and section because that's where you define the visual um, graphic or the graphic visual of your representation in 2D in drawings, your views, elevation sections, floor plans. And then let's set the cut line to be a solid line and pen is going to be 0 0.25. It's fine. And then the uncut is going to be on 13. 0 0.13 millimeters which is at color one and then we're gonna override the model surfaces so we're gonna start with the top surface top surface it depends on the area here I'll show you what I mean about that for for, for the time being let me just change this to a tile we'll come and uh, modify that once we've placed it we have a tile here and then the rest is going to be unchecked it's going to be dependent on the concrete structural um, building material so let's hit ok and then I'm gonna try to um, differentiate my the floor because we have floors that are on different levels here we have the floor for the garage we have the floor for this area where it has a lot of landscape and which is the more like the courtyard and then the kitchen then the backyard so i'm going to start with the garage the garage is going to start from here to this corner so to place a slab just like we did from the walls we have a geometry method here the first one it's a polygonal um, placement uh, method whereby you pick multiple points to place your your slab in this case we want to fill in this area here for example i have to if i had to use this one for example let's we're going to pick this point pick that one and this one then complete your placement like that so now your slab is being placed like that so it's also important guys like i said let me, let's go back to the settings i, I mentioned the classification and properties um, section whereby you need to always be checking here what's um, the classification for this means to your project so in this case it will pick automatically assign this to a slab because it's a slab and architect understands that so yeah and then under structural analytic parameters we want to define this as a load bearing element and then it's going to be a plate so let's hit ok and then uh, let's see from here this is supposed to be the lowest point of the of the of the space so it's going to be on minus 50 it's going to be a drop down here and then uh, let's see what we can do oh we are supposed to place a door here for the garage i forgot no i think it's going to be here but anyway i can just pick parameters of this door and quickly do that like so okay number one i don't think it's ideal to open from the inside because once the car parked here it's gonna be difficult to you to open it or I'd rather use a sliding door here or let's just leave it as an opening so i'll pick the parameters of the the opening and then move around to place the opening here something like that let's select it drag it to use 
drag or control D for the shortcut and then move it to this point. Okay. Right. Now we need to continue with the slab. Um, this area is going to be a landscaped area, so it's going to be a terrain. I'm going to use a different uh, material. Instead of using a slab, I'll use a mesh. A mesh tool represents a landscape. So if you activate the tool and open its settings, um, the first part, which is geometry and positioning, it indicates the thickness of your, your mesh. So in this case, I'm going to just find reasonably um, equivalent to my slab. And then I'm going to drop down a bit from zero down by 100 like so and then under the floor plan and section display let's set this to i think let's leave it at green what do you think let's leave it at green because it's a landscape i can make maybe use a lighter green i would want to have the cover fields but let's just see first how it will, it will act and then from here hit ok let's place using a different geometry method this is just like a slab we're gonna use a rectangular um, construction method and then pick this point and then diagonally we're gonna pick the opposite corner like that to place your 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 landscape or your terrain same applies to this area we have it here and then we're gonna have some to this area which is the courtyard okay let's pick parameters of the slab that we placed for the garage let's say oh by the way because it's a garage um floor we need to change the material to maybe a screed or exposed concrete instead of having a tile let's open settings under model section instead of having a tile here let's find something like maybe a paving let's say paving yeah, yeah something like that or I'll go for paving bricks it's gonna work as well paving bricks i can make it visible can make it visible on the floor plan that's the power of using archicad instead of making a um or creating a different field to represent this you can take advantage of the element itself and let it render the representation on the floor plan just like we did for the for the uh what you call the landscape or the the terrain so to do that it's either you go to the settings or under the floor plan section or you access the floor plan section here on the info bar let's click on it and then we're gonna say uh, cover fill we just we want to use the cover fill from the fill surface this does this this makes sense because we have applied remember we've applied this pavement brick moss it it's a material that comes with a fill on itself so if you if you go back to the options menu bar there and then you open element attributes you would find all the attributes that are uh, that becomes a makeup of all the materials and all the elements sorry i'm about to say we have layers lines pens fills surfaces building materials composites everything that it's in the making of uh, an element it's right here this is the heartbeat of every element in architect so you cannot have a for example an object or a floor without a surface or a floor without a building materials you can have a composite of a floor you can have a profile just like that so if you select the surfaces let's open the surfaces what we want is that uh, is the surface we've used for for this in order to to understand the the graphic pattern that will give us for above for the for the for the floor plan so you let me search for paving 
yes i think it's this one you see normally they will give you the um pic victorial or pictorial pictorial hedge for your for your your surface and then this is for this uh for the surface physical appearance in this case this is all defined here we have the exposure to light let's minimize that we have the cover fill for ground and we've used this type of fill on this ground on this um paving uh, material so the texture is something like that as well it has to mimic the uh, physical material um pattern so if you hit okay i'm going to say let's go back to floor plan section instead of using a custom cover fill we're going to use a fill from the surface see now it gives us that bricks um, um, pattern so we, let's go back and set the surface pen the the pattern pen to just a small lighter let me go for this one okay nice nice or you can change if you want you can change the surface it will instantly revise this if you change the surface to maybe say let's go for a concrete material let's go for concrete let's go for this one because you could see these are the patterns used to represent this let's say concrete yeah you can see the graphic hedge for for this material i think let's do that there we go that's what happens okay so let's move on to the next um, spaces i think we have the the entry lobby here i'll pick parameters by hitting alt in your keyboard like i said to pick parameters of this uh, particular slab and then let's open its settings because it's now this is going to be it's an inhabitable space i'm going to use a tile material a tile finish let's type tile here in the search bar if you're using the latest version of arcade you you access this um, feature for searching in your elements but the previous versions they don't have this uh, feature but if you don't use this uh, latest version i recommend i advise you to do so guys because you are missing out a lot of um, features to take advantage and speed up your process so i'll go for tile 30 by 30 something like that and then so there's another way of placing um material or placing elements in architect by using a magic wand tool if you're coming from architect i mean photoshop and autocad there is what you call a magic wand for example a magic wand selection will be picking the region for the space and apply a, a definition to it in this case we want to apply a floor a floor on this area without having to do or uh, manually placing it by picking points to point so to access that you um hit the space bar key and then you hold it it will give you the scarcer for the magic wand automatically now it fills this area if you do move it here to do that up until you click on the space to complete like that or to add so in this case we have to see what okay the tile is the finish is the tile material we're gonna use the same let's pick parameters we're gonna use the same to here in this area because this is where the staircase will be located so we would have this to continue under staircase so i'm gonna just use the rectangular method just to place like that so as you can see different scenarios different approach it's important to have all the skills and tools to understand how you can you approach different um, scenarios so here i don't think 
we would have the same yeah we would have the same material tiles there as well and then outside there is going to be a a paving is it a paving or should i landscape it it will depend what i want i think let's make it green instead of uh, this let's make this area green i would uh, maybe do this stretch this to maybe 3.2 and then the remaining part i'm making it green i'm gonna pick parameters of this uh, uh mesh then let's place it there okay so that we can have some nice trees here yeah, more like a landscape a greenhouse mm. okay i think we also have a situation here we have a stepping stones to it, but we need to have the the floor. Yeah, let's do the same for for this. I will just uh, use a rectangle geometry method, then just place it like that. Okay. Then I need to reproduce the stepping stones. So this I'm going to use a slab, then assign the surface to something like uh stone let's search for stone here stone stone i think this was i'll be fine let's say stone work and hit okay i will just activate the magic wand let me zoom in magic wand in the keyboard keyboard space bar like that and then click on the on this rectangle place okay the next is the staircase once we've done with the placement of the floor is the staircase. let me just zoom in here before to place the case you need to have roughly an idea on how you want your staircase to be like so let's go to the document and i'm going to find a line tool there pick it let's oh just let's just use a polyline and then the geometry method of a, a rectangle this will be i'll draw the first uh, landing part is going to be e11 by one meter like that where is it okay so basically i'm going to have a I'm going to have a stepping step right on the this edge and then the second will be on the like that and then the rest will be now a straight runway so let's try to achieve that let's go to design and then open the staircase tool let's open its settings with the staircase it's just like of the other tools you have this um window settings dialog window with some categories we have the first we have geometry and positioning where you key in the base offset of your staircase and the top offset of your staircase in this case we want them to be linked to story one because yeah roughly like that. and then i'll set here to zero to start from zero and then the width of the staircase it's here to be 1.5 oh let's make it 1.5 no i think 1.2 okay we have rules of uh, the trees here so if you go for 16 it will change the size of the the the, the riser or the rise height the riser height sorry to say or you can do it manual you can um customize or make it a fixed going and then make it uh, um, the desired uh, going um, length so but in most cases this is the practical uh, rule so I think it's going to be fine and the baseline you have different options here we have the reference on the left on the right and then on the center in this case i'm gonna have it on the right like that because i'm drawing from right to left 
okay then under the structure we have different types of structures here um so you would have a flat structure monolithic beam cantilevered i'm going to use just the monolithic and then the landing structure is going to be the same as the flight structure i think that's it about the structure you can also come here and define the sizes of your flight and landing to be the same uh, part so in this case let's just say okay and then place it would come and adjust it once we've placed the staircase so we're gonna start by this point right and then if you click if you click the first point graphically staircase will give you this um indication it gives you the computed number of your or a great re representation of your, st your staircase in this case let's just um because we are starting with this kept um landing i think i'm going to go for instead of a straight flight in the pet palette i'll go for this wider with equal angles or you can just use this one wider with equal goings let's see how it will be and then you turn like that this you'd change to a flight to there yeah something like that click let's zoom in here click here why it's refusing to click let's click right click and then say okay wow something happened really strange here let's do it over again let's delete that um hit w to repeat the uh the last operation and then we're gonna start again let's click here make sure we are using the wider with equal going and then click on this corner we are moving downwards like that i don't know why okay there we go okay i think this cannot work because of the number of the steps on this bend let's change to this one okay let's hit escape and then let's start all over again pick this one and then this one i'm gonna go with the wider with equal angles and uh, click this corner and then change to the straight flight something like that if you bend it like that it doesn't okay something is wrong about this case i think maybe we need to start let's start at this distance i know what might the problem and then we click here there, change it to straight fleet let's see yes i think that was the problem the distance was too short for it to bend and create this winder angles stairs so i'm gonna just uh, move it to here on top of the toilet and hit okay so yeah that's basically it no but it didn't happen the way i wanted didn't create let's undo it again redo it let's start place it here click on that straight flight okay now we need to continue now we need to continue with this to yes i think to this area then that's when we can start with a straight flight to 
somewhere here. Okay, it worked. It worked. I think you got the idea. So we can now delete the 2D 2D lines. 2D lines. I think we can also use that one. Let's try it again. We can also use the last one if we do everything right. So I'm going to click on this corner then come to somewhere here and then continue with a straight flight like that. No, I think we need to continue with that. Okay. What do you think? No, I think straight flight. No, it doesn't work the way I want. Okay, let's just leave it. I think because the this corner is too tight. Maybe that's the case. But um, that's the whole idea. And then let's say we, because, let's see what we can do. Yeah. There are some bunch of settings that you can achieve on staircase. For example, let's see how we can um, access such information. Open it settings. And then let's go for the floor plan and display. That is a lot of area or a lot of parameters that are available for the 2D and the 2D representation of the staircase, as you can see there. There are a bunch of working line you can choose from available uh, options there. The brake line also, it has uh, different types of brakes. And then uh, we have the grid and structure. We have also two different types of how to display your grid structure. The work line are talking about that numbering also we have two different of numbers we have the one with the outline and the plain one the up and arrow we also have more or less the same but i don't see the difference description of the staircase we have a built-in description and a state description let's see the built-in description it gives you a platform to key in a custom description about the staircase but let me just leave it under the staircase, under the description. And then, yeah, that's basically it about the staircase. We're moving on again to the next stage where we'll be doing the object placement. Object like for furniture, for sanitary uh, equipment, and the kitchen cabinetry, and the garage. Um, object so but before you do that let's just fix this area first i'm not impressed by the 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 landscape um graphics so what i would do to select all of them there is another trick to select all the um all the elements that are on the same tool for example if you go to the if you activate the mesh tool here and then you hit Control A in your keyboard. It will select all the elements that are in this mesh tool, of which it's another great way of um, quickly selection, quickly selecting elements in in your in our kit. So let's come here under floor plan display. I want this to be. I want the cover field to be lighter gray, lighter gray, very thin, something like that. Yes, so that it doesn't overpower the the reading of the drawing. Okay, I think the staircase I can also make it black, a black line. So I would come here under grid structure, change the line to 13, so that it becomes a focal point. Set all the pen parameters to. To this pen and then you should see the preview changes there 
we are left with one. I don't know what which one is. I think it must be somewhere here. Okay. Let's just go there and set. We have the line, the break line as well. Let's make it uniform. Uniform pen, the walking line. Yeah. The up and down arrow. Okay. Description. Yeah. And then hit OK. Should be now. Oh, the, well, I forgot about the numbering. So numbering set it to color one. All right. Okay, it looks great now. Yeah, and then let's move on to the object placement. We're gonna start with the garage door. I mean the garage uh, area. So let's garage is going to be the the car top plane, a vehicle top plane. So open the object object tool up when it's um, settings you have a, a chance uh, an opportunity to search from the library here but for the sake of this i don't like the search bar for the object because it's a bit cumbersome it's not that efficient i don't know i hope arcade will improve much for the coming for the forthcoming um version which is 27 so let's find down the we can use a 2d um let's just say 2d vehicle let's see yeah i can select this then go back to the folder or sub folder here it will select the folder for vehicle symbols i'll select this one then let's see the the previewing from the top is this i can find something interesting i think there is a yeah this one is also interesting the 2d representation i think i like the pen i will leave it in that manner and then hit ok let's just place it here we're gonna rotate it vertically you can select it and then um, scroll down in the info bar you would find flip and rotation make it 90 degrees enter and then you can hit ctrl d in your keyboard and click the element to move it to the position like that okay so the next object is the the sanitary equipments for these toilets or for both toilets let's just start with this bathroom and open its object settings again what we can do we can also pick the parameters of this object then open the settings and uh, let's search for the basin let's search for the basin there we go and then we want to control alt and inject this to the basin then make sure the size is you can see it's been distorted because it, it took the the length of the car in this case i'm gonna change the basin to maybe 800 800 by 800 not that it's big it's huge let me make it 500 it's going to be 500 as well. Um, 400, something like this. Okay, and then the height. The height will be I think 500. Yeah, I think it's 300. 300. So let's see in 3D. I still shoot. Let me make it 150. Yeah, something like that. And then you hit OK. Let's place the base on here. Select it and uh, flip it. Or you can just select one of the points here and then mirror. And then pick. They define the mirror um, axis. So in this case, I'm going to pick the point and then 
is going to be on the vertical axis like that click on this one of the points and activate the drag drag it to the wall like that but it has to be inside the wall like that because these are the MAP outlets so for MAP modeling it's important to to understand that so we have here we have the toilet widget so let's go back pick parameters of this and then open let's search the WC there we go and then we apply this let's take this hit OK oh sorry I'm undo what we could have done is to transfer the settings of that that way and we can place it what happened we need to set no let me undo pick params of the basin open the settings transfer this by control alt to that one and then hit ok it should take the the 2d settings for for the baser and then let's pick this point and mirror define the axis vertically like that let's pick this point and activate the drag to move it to the point or to the wall something like that okay perfect let's move on to the the kitchen yeah the kitchen um with this current version of arcade we have a great um kitchen cabinetry so if you're not yet upgraded yeah hey, you're missing out a lot so let's open the objects and open the settings let's go back here i would want to find a folder for furniture is it yeah cabinetry no it's supposed to be kitchen kitchen cabinets yes this is what i'm talking about it came up with this latest version so if you are not using the version you are missing out so let's start with the we're gonna apply the sink here and the and the top with some cabinets so i'm gonna go with this one first and uh, let's do what let's we can apply the settings of the 2d representation from the from the basin as well and then let's see when you place it no it didn't happen i think for this is it won't it won't work because of that so for you in order to tell which side is the front which side is the back you'd see with this dot the black dot the black dot represent the back side of the cabinet so i'm gonna just drag it to the wall like that and then let's open it setting we can override the pens just here then by just setting one two all of them just like quickly just like that simple and then we can make a copy of this by control shift d in your keyboard control shift hold d then pick the um, copy to place it there this is going to be let's open the settings it's going to be the the sink i'm looking for kitchen sink um but this one is, is suitable for making a kitchen sink so before i do that let's just pick parameters of that and open settings Control alt to apply the settings to the new design okay and then if we come here on the parameters let's find the sink part and then make sure the sink is activated so that you can choose the type of sink you'd want i'll go for no, let's go for this one no we've chosen the right this is a chamfered one i don't want the chamfered one i just want the basic uh cabinet i think this also could work okay yes 
let's apply that and then do that what else again do we need we go back to the parameters let's go for the tab activate the tab make sure it's what you want we have different set of tabs here we have this one and then the double sided where it has uh, um, and then we have also this one so it will depend on what you want i'll go with the first one then choose that okay then hit okay so from here i'm going to stretch the cabinet to go all the way to this corner here let's zoom in first peek on this um pinky or what is this purple color hot spots then move it to this area and then the sink also can be stretched as well like that and then you can pick the point here oh this is for the for the tap but this i want to move instead of okay i want for the sink oh, i'll go with this one so that i can move the node for the sink to somewhere here let's move this also what's going on here okay i think when we moved this we forgot also to move that one and we can bring this back move our sink back like that okay let's make sure it's yeah make sure it's in line with the others okay and then uh, let's see other possibilities all right and now i need to cap this because you need to end it by having a line like that let's select and open its settings we're gonna find something like the what's edge visibility yes then i'm going to make sure the counter should be also visible on the right let's see oh no it's an opposite one on the left let's uncheck this one hit okay yes perfect all right and then this side it's the other cabinets like i can just mirror copy mirror a copy of this by right clicking on the space then move um mirror copy i'll use this wall to mirror copy like that and let's move this door by clicking on the point and activate drag right on the edge of the cabinetry like that so i'll make a copy of this by control shift d or to drag let's just drag and then you hit control to add a copy see now with a plus sign it means i'm carrying a copy of that so and then place it here do the same to this move this and then hit control to add a copy no but i think this fine it should end here and then i want to change this to a select it and then open its settings let's set this to a cooktop instead of a sink so i'm going to find a sink make sure it's off let's find a cooktop we don't have a cooktop for this let's hit okay i think we need to use a different object so let's pick parameters of this and then open the object settings let's find under appliances it's not a cabinet it's an appliance so i'm gonna find um okay where the appliances here yeah, they then find for the cooktop we have a built-in here we have different styles to choose from i'll go with this and let's see what else we can set the 2d representation 
we can overwrite the symbol to whatever we want but I would, I would leave it the way it is and then I'll make sure all the edges are visible because I want to define its position so on 2D detail I'll set it to full resolution the control pen to be pen 2 which is 0 0.15 millimeters then hit ok let's place it here um, activate the arrow tool or escape to cancel the command then let's move this to the position like so drag it to there okay now we have our kitchen with cabinetry let's place the dining and the lounge um, seating so open its settings from the objects let's find uh, for this I'm going to go with the uh, should there should be a folder called furniture layout yeah this the one and then I have uh, dining tables here let's select the dining table and the first thing that I want to set is the 2d representation let's click on this uh, dining table rectangle settings arrow to access the parameters and then let's find the representation I'll set the 2d detail to full resolution you can override also the 2d whatever you want so in this case I'm gonna leave it there and set the color to 0 0.15 yeah and then the rest is history hit ok let's place it here and then go to arrow tool to cancel the operation let's move this to the area and uh, what I want is to reduce the the length of the table by clicking on one of the points here of the table click there then we can use move node and I'm gonna stretch it like that but I st when I stretch it it reduces the okay it reduces the number of seating I don't want it to be like that let's just leave it the way it is or we can rotate it let's click on this point and activate the rotate from the pet palette click on the point then um, yeah specify the second point and then you can define your rotation like that okay let's move it to by drag to here okay now is the time for the sitting I'm gonna pick parameters of this and then open its settings sitting layout as well is there under furniture layouts we're gonna go with this and then I'm going to reduce number of seat sitting on the left is going to be out and then go to the parameters let's find the 2d representation 2d detail should be full and the control to be consistent is 0 0.15 then hit OK to place like that. So that's basically how you do um, object placement. So we have the areas we want to define the green areas, the courtyard and this area as well. We want to place some trees. Let's go back to the objects. Let's find, uh, in this case, I'm going to type 2D. Oh, sorry. 2d trees I don't want to use the 3d trees because just for the sake of a visualization in the floor plan just to enhance my floor plan I'll go with this tree tree plan 26 let's check okay set the plan here active and then you can choose from the styles you have how I wish I could could let us customize or create our own styles and update it to and use our custom i think it will be it will be perfect for us let's see i think the first one yeah this one it's i'll go with it and then hit okay 
let's just place it there and then what i want to is to make a variation of size so what i'll do i can stretch and uh, use the stretch make sure it's in line with the diagonals i'll um shift and hold in your keyboard to restrict it to go diagonally like that so that i can scale it and then move it here because it's a small tree obviously you need to send it backward this has to be on top of that and in reality so i'll right click in the screen then find a display order and then bring this to front to have this kind of effect so i'm going to pick parameters of that place it here as well another one i can let's make this here and then we can have this this will go all the way because it will go all the way like that i'm gonna reduce this as well click on this hot spot make sure you if you don't hold shift this is how it's gonna distort the the object but if you if you hold you restrict it to go on diagonally like that something like this i think i need to do here again right click display order bring to front i might reduce this one as well yep okay now it looks like a proper drawing plan so basically that's how you start archicad or your first archicad plane so we can move forward and play some dimensions i think let's do that dimensions are very important to outline the sizes or measurements of of certain elements so in archicad there are various ways of doing dimensions we have um, under documents we have a dimension tool here if we activate it you can um, set the construction method to be a linear dimension or a cumulative then baseline or you can use the elevation um, dimension marker so we are spoiled of choice there but in most cases we use this let's click on it and then to place a dimension just a basic dimension you'd have to click on the points like that it to um, snap the elements for this case i want to start picking the thickness of this wall and the thickness of all the the walls according to the way it is and then place it along the length of the wall. so i'll click on this wall like that it will add these two points i'll move again to the next wall click on it just like that and click on it just like that then once you are done with specifying the walls that you want to uh, dimension you can right click and then hit ok so that you can have this um, option now to place position and place your dimension just like that that's another way of doing dimension the second way of doing it is now using automation um, commands so we're gonna use let's see how you can place an automatic dimensions so i'm gonna select this wall and then that one one and oh, this wall again that one yeah for the sake of this let's just leave it there to place a dimension this side i've picked all the necessary walls that are needs to be involved in the dimension line that i'm going to pick it's going to be place three rows let's go to the documents and under annotations we're going to go for automatic dimensioning under exterior dimensions let's click on that so we have um the rows here for our dimensions we have overall dimension dimension external geometry and the dimension structures you can also see or reference to this graphic number one it says it's overall and then two 
it's the dimension external geometry as you can see and then the last which is four is for the openings and then down below here you can choose how you want to dimension your openings for doors you'd want to have a whole size or unit size depending on what type of information you want same applies to windows as well i'll leave everything on wall on wall whole size and then if you move further down we have dimensions um uh wall by outer faces or by core faces so in a situation whereby you have a composition a composite that have different layers of materials you do have to specify which which one exactly you want to you want to dim dimension the thicknesses of each material that involves the composition of that wall or you want just to dimension the core face which is the overall um, composition the overall thickness of the composition and then you have you have the distance between the dimensions i'll set it to maybe 400 and then if you have selected all the elements or all the walls you have an option to place dimensions on all four sides but in this case because i've selected only elements that are going to be affected by this right side dimension rows so i won't go for this option so let's hit ok once you hit ok you have to draw the line representing the length that you are placing your dimension on so i'm gonna click from this point to there and then with the hammer cursor you need to place your dimension um, make sure the position is right i'm gonna put in somewhere here and then place that's basically how you can place um automatic dimensions in most cases you have to check as well it's is it making sense i think yeah i can also select the entire row and then open its settings what i can do i have dimensioned um, settings as well i can um, reduce the witness line to be a shorter or a sized height for example if i go with uh, this one and then hit ok you see now it reduces the size height and it can also move this by control d and then you can just move it fairly easily like that so that's basically it on placing dimensions one last thing one last item is the creation of the room tags creation of room labeling so it's also important because you cannot have a fully fleshed plan without labeling all the spaces we're using the zones or zone tool to achieve that so if you go back to design tool palette there is a zone tool here so if you open the zone settings this is the preview of the labeling of the space and then if you go down below here under settings let's open the next page and define what we want to show in our space or in our label so let's just hit okay so that we can see first and then we can uh, come back and set according to the desired results so the construction method of placing zone is similar to the slab and other as you can see we have the construction or the polyline method where you have to choose multiple points to define the placement or the rectangle and if you click on the arrow you have both the rotated and rectangle um, method but what is different here is the the method which is for the inner edge and the reference line I can decide to pick the inner edge of the wall so that to place like for example let's do it if we click on the inner edge on the space here it will pick the inner edge of the space as long as the space is enclosed it will do that and then i can with the hammer case i can place the label like that so if it doesn't show it may be let's redo and undo it's underneath the it's underneath the slab let's right click 
that's the trick guys if you want to select a newly placed element you, you can say undo and redo i get automatically it to pick only recently placed object or elements and then you can right click and try to bring it to front just like that you see now what it does it covers the whole area we don't want to see we want to make this same transparent let's open its settings and then under stamp uh no under floor plan make this add this and then activate this tool with the cover fill and then set to an airspace if you come here you can change this to transparent like that so that you have uh, your thing like that so this plus sign represent your zone and it's it's easy for you to select it on this plus sign as you can see now for the latest version of archicad um, the zone performs or behaves a little bit different from the previous versions whereby if you click in once it will give you the information this one it includes or it uses um the label to place some you have to place the zone and then you can also use a label to display the information about the zone what i mean by that so if you go back to the documents you have a pick your label tool and then if you open the settings of the label if you scroll down here you would find there is a zone label which is this one if you activate it and then hit ok if you select the zone it will place the label for the zone so let's cancel or escape the command and click on the zone so if you have to rename this zone as garage oh sorry let's say garage then hit enter it will automatically label or adjust the label as you can see there and um, you can also depend on what type of information you want to display about this uh, zone so let's select the label open its settings and under symbol and label custom settings you can choose on what you want to display the volume there is a bunch of list here to choose information you want to um, um, use and then uh, the text uh, let's set this to Arial and then I'm bold no I want bold everything I want just to bold the the name so let's come here under custom settings move to this page just like that i'm gonna override the the text style no this is the line the first line override uh, no i don't want the override to okay i see it as a i wanted to bold only the title but okay for the sake of this let me just leave it there i would um, do another tutorial for that so let's move on so that's basically your label if you want to take out the frame um let's say select it open settings we don't want to show the frame so you go back here to the label symbols and then there is a frame style let's say let's say we don't want the frame i think we need to go to the text style and take out the frame then hit okay perfect okay so let's pick the parameter of the zone and now we can go by all the spaces to place the zone for the areas like this it's going to be um, difficult to pick the region or the inner edge so i'm going to use the rectangular method so that i can define oh sorry rectangular method so that i can define the kitchen 
area place it there and then the the dining area together with the lounge something like that and then from here i'll pick the label tool where is it yeah now we came to a point whereby selection is going to be a, a, a challenge because of uh, elements are on top of each other in this case we have a slab we have a zone we have a label and uh, the 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 zone so there are more than two elements stacked in one position so to select or navigate through the selection is going to be very challenging unless you use what you call the tab you, you tap hit the keyboard there is a tab keyboard if you click on it it will indicate or pick one element if you click again it will pick another element in this case it's a label if you do it again it will pick a slab so that's basically how you can quickly select or go about multiple elements that are on top of each other so in this case i'm looking for a label let's go again that's the label and then i can now click in a keyboard the alt to activate the pick parameters tool so that i can now go place the label oh, i didn't pick the zone let's do tab pick the zone do tap, pick the zone. Do tap, pick the zone. Tap, pick the zone. Tap, pick the zone. Okay. For this, I'll get rid of this because it was mistakenly done. So let's pick the zone for this area and it's going to be a lobby. Right. This is going to be the lobby as well. I have the lounge, then oh, sorry, tab. We have the dining. Then the kitchen. Perfect. So you have your elements placed like that. I don't know why this the numbering. It started numbering with the... Uh, 0101 for garage and this but it's something that can be fixed as well but let me take this opportunity to thank you if you reached uh, to this stage and uh, congratulations you've made the first architect plan so thank you guys for tuning in for this video um appreciate your effort a lot but if you want more of um the resources and uh, templates that can uh, optimize and advances your workflow um, check our link for the our beam store which is uh, mesolite beam um, store to find anything that can be of use for your projects so it's very um, diverse uh, library or resources for you to maybe improve your workflow so Thank you once again make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell if you really want to continue watching videos like this be notified for a new video if you liked what i've what i've shared with you guys make sure you hit that thumb um, thumbs button and if you didn't get really anything from this video just do me a favor by hitting there's a dislike button there let me know thank you guys bye bye